Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Off-Road Hub. My name is Ken, and today I'm going to continue working on my uh, 2010 Toyota FJ Cruiser solid axle swap. Today we're going to get the uh, front three links in, connected to the Dana 60 front axle. Um, and if we get that done, we'll continue on to uh, getting my rock sliders put on. Uh, I've got Ken from Oregon here to give me a hand today. Really appreciate him coming all the way from Oregon uh, just to lend me an extra hand. It's a really big help. So here we go. Let's uh, get going on this three link. So to get started on this three link, I've got all my bracketry right here. Uh, similar to the rear, I've got these uh, lower link mounts. Uh, these are from Ballistic Fabrication as well as this uh, third link mount that goes on top of the axle from Ballistic. I've got this uh, frame third link mount, which comes from TMR. I've got to weld that together. And then I've got these axle um, link mounts, lower link mounts from, those came from Artec. So those are our three link bracketry. And then I'll have to pull some 3 16 from my scrap pile down here uh, to reinforce, to make my frame reinforcements. And then for the links themselves, I've got my quarter inch wall, um, two inch outside diameter DOM tubing. I just got that from a local steel supplier. And then over here, all my uh, Johnny joints, uh, three right hand thread, three left hand thread, of course, because you put a, a one on each end of the tubing so you can turn it and make uh, alignment adjustments. Uh, these are just Johnny joints I got from um, uh, Rock Jock, rockjock.com. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the link material. Next in the setup for this uh, job, I've got the axle uh, centered and in position. A long time ago, I painted these uh, lines on the floor so that I can align it, the axle across and centered. See, I have a line in the center of the vehicle there. So I've got it, uh, my caster set, it's at about seven degrees right now, but that's okay. I had to get this jack stand out of here because I have to mount my um, link mount right here. So the jack stands in the way, but it's on a jack there and hanging. And then the jack stand over there is still okay. So got the axle all set up. So after we get our brackets on the bottom, uh, we'll get the right, the correct length and everything for our links. So underneath the vehicle, our frame uh, brackets for the links are going to go here. There used to be a big cross number right here, so we had to grind that all clean. Um, but our upper link mount's going to go here, lower here. It's going to go up here and just barely miss the oil pan. Uh, the upper, the upper link mount, the upper link is going to be tricky because it just has to miss the oil pan and also has to clear this frame over here to go to the top of the axle. And the other side is a little bit more straightforward with just a lower link mount uh, to the axle. So um, the upper link mount on this one is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So I'm just going to get uh, this first lower link mount. This is on the passenger side tacked up and uh, I'm using my magnets again. I want these link mounts to be uh, straight with the, uh, here we go, straight with the frame. <laughs> and so I've got these big long magnets that I hang from the frame and they actually are holding the link mount for me and they're holding it perfectly level with the, or straight with the frame so I can get it tacked on. So this is the passenger side. We got it tacked up here as you just saw. And uh, above this is gonna go the third link mount, mounted on the frame here. But we can't just mount it to the frame because this metal is pretty thin, uh, not much to it. And also I wanna reinforce this lower mount. So with the help of some uh, cardboard aided design, um, I've made this pattern 
for some 316 steel that I'm going to put up here uh, to reinforce this frame. Um, and then we can get that on here and then get the upper link mount up here. So. So I got my uh, upper bracket welded together, which I showed you before, a TMR bracket. And I've got my plating cut out that's going to go on the frame and then down to the uh, bracket. So now I just need to go underneath and figure out where I want this and mark where I'm going to put my weld holes in here. And through the magic of YouTube, here are the plates, all ready to go with my uh, weld holes in them. Uh, this is for the driver's side. I went ahead and made that one too. Um, this is Steel It Paint, who uh, is not a sponsor, but uh, it's weldable uh, stainless steel in a can. So I put that on there just to prevent rust from forming underneath the plate after it's on. Uh, and here's my bracket. And that's going to go on there, something like that. So I've had a lot of questions about, well, how do you figure out the geometry? And how do you figure out where to put the, the mounts? And how do you figure out what, how long to make your links? And, and all that kind of stuff. Well, unless you're building uh, some custom subframe or anything like that, it's pretty simple to figure out on the FJ. You have frame rails. And you can mount it, you know, on the outside or the inside and you've got the axle up there and you've got that much space to put the mount on and then it's got to go on the same in the same place on the other side so unless you're going crazy with tube framing or anything it's pretty self-explanatory because uh, there's only a certain number of places you can mount your links so it's really not that complicated and for the length, I just decided to move my axle six inches forward and uh, my where I put the link mounts is just based on uh, other solid axle swapped FJ cruisers, uh, specifically Eric's down in Utah. So now I'm going to get these plates welded up and get my bracket on there and then uh, get the brackets on the axle over there and then we can figure out uh, exactly how long my links are going to be and make the links. All right, I've got my plating on the passenger side with the third link uh, or the upper mount, upper link mount tacked on there, right there, ready to roll. And so now, since I've got the driver's side over here as well, um, next step is to get these brackets on the Dana 60 up here. So one issue with the Dana 60 here is uh, a lack of space over here on the driver's side. So this uh, link mount has to go on here and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to mount it pretty low so that I have space for my shock mount, which also basically has to go in the same space and it all has to fit in there. Uh, it's pretty tight. I'm going to have to do a little grinding and then... Um, yeah, I'll probably have to cut a little bit of this uh, chunk of this truss out right here for the for the coilover mount. But uh, just one of the downsides of using a, a Junkyard Dana 60 is that um, they come with so little space over here. But we'll make it work. All right, I've got these lower link mounts uh, tacked on, driver's side, passenger side, and then uh, Ken and I, we got the, uh, the axle all set. It's centered under the vehicle. It is uh, at the right distance forward and backward. Uh, it's at the right caster angle. So uh, now we can get the length uh, for the lower links. And that's simply done by measuring from the center of this hole to the center of this hole. And 
for this setup that came out to be 40 40 and a quarter inches so as i mentioned earlier i'm going to be cutting these links out of this quarter inch wall uh two inch uh outside diameter dom and our links need to be a total of 40 and a quarter inches the link with the amount of adjustment that i want on it adds four inches so we need to subtract eight from 40 and a quarter which leaves us with 32 and a quarter so i need to cut the tubing to 32 and a quarter and then put the links on and that'll get me to 40 and a quarter I got my bungs in here and the tubes. You saw me cutting this nice bevel. Uh, that's so that I can get a nice weld on here eventually. But for now, of course, I'm just gonna tack them so that I can make sure everything all works together nicely. All right, so now we've got links that are 40 and a quarter inches and ready to go under the vehicle. And here's what they look like under the vehicle. Here's the driver's side and the passenger side. So now we gotta get the third link from the top of the axle, or the top of the truss on the axle, actually, back here to this bracket. And that's going to be tricky mostly because of this gap right here, the frame right here and the oil pan. There's not a ton of space there and you don't really want to be hitting either of those, but especially the oil pan. There's also this exhaust right here, this uh, catalytic converter. And um, yeah, the exhaust is going to have to be kind of reworked to uh, make that fit. So what we're gonna do is take this uh, length of DOM, I cut it down to 48 inches, I bought them in five foot lengths. Cut this one down to 48 inches, and we're gonna stick a link in one end uh, so we can put it in that bracket and then try to get a better idea of where we need to stick the, uh, the bracket that goes on top of the axle. So you can see what tight squeeze this is here. Mm. Mix the frame, mix the oil pan, exhaust right here. Some stuff is gonna have to change, but at least we can figure out where this bracket goes for, for now. Down under the hole? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're looking at 41 and a half. All right, so 41 and a half inches is our length. Um, so we're gonna cut this to 33 and a half because we uh, gain eight inches of total length from the links. So we're gonna cut this to 33 and a half for 41 and a half. <laughs> All right, the third link is in here, um, and it clears the frame, and it clears the oil pan, not by much. Um, I mean, I can get my finger between there. But the really big thing is that it definitely isn't going to clear this exhaust. This uh, passenger side cat is going to have to move in some way. Going to have to figure out some custom exhaust here for sure. But the three links are in, driver's side, passenger side, upper link. So we're off to a good start here. Now just to work out the kinks, we'll figure something out.
So for this interference issue with the catalytic converters underneath, um, there are a couple different solutions that I'm aware of. One is possibly to switch the left and right catalytic converters and apparently um, that makes the angle better so that you might be able to fit the suspension underneath. Also, another option is to remove uh, the catalytic converters completely and not have catalytic converters and then do something like a URD simulator. Um, obviously not having cats on isn't technically, technically legal for road use, but yeah, I don't know. I think for now, I'm gonna pull them off just to get them out of the way so that I can get the suspension set up and then I'll figure out how I want to handle that routing um, later on. But for now, let's just get them out of the way. There's one. Wait, it's there we go. Mm -hmm. Well, now you can see that uh, I've got plenty of room up here. This is where the cat was basically an inch above the upper link. Plenty of room there now, so the suspension can move, and um, after that's done, then we can build the exhaust around the suspension rather than trying to build the suspension around the exhaust. All right, with the three links on, I'm ready to move on to the pan hard and steering on the front of the axle, which it's going to be a pretty major undertaking. Uh, it's probably going to take, well, I know, it'll take more time than I have to squeeze into this video. So I'm going to close this one out with uh, the reinstallation of my uh, white knuckle off-road rock sliders. These look like they're uh, primed, but they're not. This is, uh, I had them sandblasted. They were powder, powder coated before. Uh, they've been sandblasted, you can see. All the scrapes and things are still in there, but it's absolutely clean, uh, bare metal. So I'm gonna clean these off, prep them, and uh, paint them, and get them back onto the FJ. these things painted. Uh, I painted them with steel it and uh, that stuff lays down really nice. It looks really good. This is the, this is the bottom of the uh, my sliders and all my scratches and, and dents are still there but uh, nice fresh coat of paint on a uh, on nice bare steel so they look pretty good. Pretty good that steel it works pretty well but for $24 a can I would definitely hope it did work well. So I'm going to bolt these up like they were designed to do, um, but I'm also going to weld them, them on. So they'll be bolted and welded. They definitely won't be coming off. Uh, I did alter the frame for the rear brackets uh, for the rear axle, and so I'm going to have to actually cut this pad off, and this, this one will actually just be welded onto the frame where the other three will be bolted. So I got to slice these rear pads off uh, this one and the one back there. Got to get cut off and then we'll get these things back on the uh, on the FJ. Here we go. Here's the passenger side back on and the driver's side back on. It's good to see these back on here. The FJs look strange without them. All right. So you can see this one's missing a bolt right here, but got it welded on. Welded on. Just some monster shadows happening right now. There we go. Welded on. And the back welded on as well. So bolted and welded. These aren't going to be falling off, that's for sure. I've never really talked much about my sliders, uh, but I really have loved them. Uh, again, they're made by White Knuckle Off Road. Um, the one thing I really like about them is that they have this square tubing right here on the inside. It makes them super strong, and I like the amount that they come off the body. 
and this really slight kick out at the back. I've been able to uh, pivot off of these, off of rocks and stuff a number of times. And uh, I really like, I really like these sliders. Thanks again for coming along on this episode. We got quite a bit done. We've got these front three links done. I'm really excited about that. Um, next we get to move into uh, the steering. I saved the pan hard for the steering portion because well, the steering and the pan hard are really close to each other, so I expect some interaction there. Got my sliders back on. I'm happy about that. It gives me something else to grab onto uh, when I'm getting up and down, up and down off the floor. Um, thanks to Ken again for being here and helping me out. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, so you can catch me every Monday and Thursday. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.